we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. In this episode, we mean business, quite literally, as we show you how to really boss it on that next work trip. If you hate going away and want as smooth a ride as possible, we've got just the hacks for you. You can try and reduce your own experience of turbulence by sitting over the wings of the planes. Look no further for the most ingenious solutions to your infuriating business trip troubles. From packing like a pro to pimping your in-flight films. And a hotel breakfast fit for a CEO. Plus we'll be putting two custom cases head to head in a high octane race around the airport in our epic hack. The secret to every great business trip is a well-packed suitcase. Not sure what philosophers said that, but I agree. Here's our first top tip. Ever since the great migration event of Homo erectus two million years ago, humans have struggled with how best to pack their stuff. This hack solves that ancient problem. It's all about the roll, a bit like clothing sushi. I'm someone that's really, really bad at packing. I, I always bring too much stuff and it never fits in my suitcase, so next time I go away, I'm going to be trying those folding techniques, definitely. While it's, while it's practical, it feels like it takes an awful long time. So I imagine, I imagine the person, if they're maybe going away for a week's holiday and they're leaving on Saturday, they'll have to start packing on Wednesday. You can never be too meticulous with packing, though, George. You've got two ways of packing. You can stuff it in or you can roll it up. The problem with stuffing it in, you're likely to get a lot of creases in your clothes. But if you roll it, you minimise the creases and you reduce the amount of air that's trapped in the clothes. Overall, you can fit more stuff in. Roll up, roll up, it's the first hack of the show and it's a hit. You've made it onto the plane with your brilliantly packed bags, but there's no in-flight entertainment. Don't worry, we've got a hack that means you won't have to resort to reading. Voila! A budget hands-free entertainment centre that you haven't had to mortgage your house to afford. I guess, you know, the fact that his phone is inside this plastic bag means that he's not going to spill coffee on it. It's hands-free entertainment. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a reasonable hack, but I'm slightly worried about his toiletries. Still, if it's a choice between hygiene and entertainment... I've done that thing where I hold the phone for the whole journey. I've, I've got off a plane before and literally haven't been able to move my arm. It's kind of locked in that position. So something that does support it in front of you is a good idea. So with this hack, even turbulence won't disturb your latest TV binge. Well, air turbulence is caused by variations in air density as the plane flies through the air. Aeroplanes travel on wind flow. Most of the time, luckily for us, it's smooth, making for an easy flight until you hit choppy air and feel the all too familiar bumps of turbulence as the plane is buffeted around. This can be due to physical obstructions like mountains. As the air flows over the top and travels down the other side, it creates waves in the air. Turbulence in the air can also be created by storms. The rapidly changing air currents can lead to a very bumpy ride. Changes in temperature and air density can also be responsible as you move from land to sea or hit a different temperature air mass. You can try and reduce your own experience of turbulence by sitting over the wings of the planes, because the fronts and the backs of planes tend to move the most during turbulence. Just make sure you book a window seat so you can see those wings that are preventing you from plummeting thousands of feet to the ground. 
You'll never have to read that awful in-flight magazine again with this boredom-busting entertainment hack. A high-flying hit! Boring plane journeys are a great time to grab some rest. And here's a great way to maximise your mile-high nap time. With this simple fold technique, your trusty hoodie will transform, as if by magic, into a pillow. This makes those tiny pillows they give you look even more useless. Uh, the question is, would a businessman bring a hoodie on his business trip? He might budge to bring a pillow. He would if he was like a really cool businessman, Chris. I think it's uh, very practical. Um, I worry that maybe it's going to be a bit dense. I know certainly when I've been camping before, I've tried making clothes into pillows and it's just a bit too, it's like putting your head on a football. I'm quite a big fan of the shoulder of who's ever's next to me, so I don't really need the travel pillow as much as others. This hack is dedicated to anyone who's ever travelled with Andrea. I find it, I find it quite easy to nap, but it's not really very practical because I'm usually the one driving. Now it goes without saying that the one thing that all airplane passengers fear the most is, of course, missing the food trolley. But why does food taste so much different up in the air? When you're on a plane, you might notice your food tastes exceptionally bland. And this is due to a huge range of factors. The biggest one being it's really dry on an aeroplane. It's actually drier than most deserts. And that affects how we taste things. Eat, hoodie, sleep, repeat. A perfect comfy hack hit. But how do we know which of these hacks are really worth your time and effort? Coming up over at Hack HQ, with the help of Mike's human guinea pig, Stephen, We'll show you how to get through check-in at record time as we put two super hacked suitcases to the test in a race like no other. So far, we've shown you how to get ahead with packing and a great way to stay switched on in the skies. Stick with us, though, as we consult the internet for a Blue Sky Ideas session of hacks to keep you on top of the work food chain. First impressions in business are everything. This shirt ironing hack will make sure yours won't be memorable for the wrong reasons. So how does this housework hack work? The reason creases form in clothes is down to the tiny strand-like molecules called polymers that make up the fabric. When these are all bent up, they tend to stick together. And when that happens, you get creases forming. With this hack, the person has put their shirt in the shower and that's then heating the material again and getting it wet again. And so that allows the fibres to then relax, the bonds then break and then reform because the material is hanging, they reform in the new flat position. Some wrinkle-free fabrics have been specially designed to stop water getting between the little polymers, which means they won't crease nearly as easily. For the travelling multitaskers amongst you, this shower time hack will decrease as you degrease for that next business meeting. A time-saving hit! If your attempt at the last hack failed miserably, you'll now be left with a soaking wet, albeit creaseless shirt. Here's how to dry it like a boss. It's kind of cool, but you, you feel like you'd probably just go out with a damp shirt, whatever happened. Hate to be the voice of doom, but I think I'm with Andrea here. To get your clothes to dry quickly, you need to have three factors right. That's temperature, humidity, and a movement of air. If you can have low humidity, high temperature, and lots of air movement, your clothes are going to be dry in no time at all. Pretty much rule 101 of business is don't go out in soaking wet clothes. A moist miss, I'm afraid. Luggage is probably the most important item in any business traveller's possession. How about doubling that up with your mode of transport? This case will suit any business person in a rush. And with reinforced wheels, it's guaranteed to take the strain so you don't have to. How is it moving, though? Magic? Sadly, no. There's a motor installed at the bottom of the case. Obviously. Passengers walking around the airport terminal can walk up to a kilometre, which can be about 20 minutes. On one of these pieces of kit, you can cut that down to a seven-minute fun ride. Who would say no to that? Maybe someone who thinks somebody they know might see them. He probably won't save time not being in a car, because it looks slower than a car. But certainly, getting around in the airport, oh, yeah, he's going to be a lot quicker. But it does bring about a whole new meaning to the term speedy boarding. A wheelie good hack for any business traveller. Just don't pack anything fragile near the seat. A high-octane hack hit. 
We're pressing the pedal to the metal now at Hack HQ as Mike and Stephen put the Formula One into our business trip, Epic Hack. I'm looking forward to today. Business hacks, that's what we want, business. 21st century, the world I was brought up in, water cooler meetings, I'll talk to your people, I'll email it to you. Not the Mike's world of just crud and stuff everywhere and just, oh, I'll throw an engine and blow this up. This is what I want, this is the future. I can teach him a few things, maybe space age instead of Victorian age, that's what I want. I'd love to see you trying to teach Mike a few things. Mike! Stephen. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm business shit ready, suited, suitcase. Where are we off to? What did you think we were doing? Well, I thought we were on a jolly. Jolly? Have you ever been on a business trip, Stephen? <laughs> this is our business hack, right? Yes. And I thought, business trips. How do you make your life easier on a business trip, going through an airport? Um. oh, dear. And I'm looking at these two now, and I've suddenly realised these aren't normal suitcases, are they, Mike? <laughs> of course not. Why would they be? Not at all. So, what I've done here, I've got one for you. Right. And one for me. OK. Yeah. Yours looks a little bigger. I'm saying nothing. A little bit. So, mine has got a 125cc petrol engine. Every engine has a cylinder, and its volume is measured in cubic centimetres. That's what CC stands for. The bigger the cylinder volume, the more fuel the engine can burn, and the more power it can produce. Right, OK. Brilliant. Yours, on the other hand, is based on an electric mobility scooter. Mobility scooters don't run on petrol like Mike's. They use electricity from a battery which powers a motor and turns the wheels. Right, OK. Yeah. Well, look, uh, you know, I know what you like. You like putting together your hacks. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with that. And there's a coffee cup holder and a parasol. Why? Well, a coffee cup holder in case you need to grab a coffee in the airport. When would I ever do that? When you want a coffee, Stephen? <laughs> and the parasol because of your, uh, you know, pale complexion. Yeah, but the only reason I've got a pale complexion is every time I see you, the blood runs out of my face in fear of what we're about to do. I mean, look, OK, fine, this looks silly. What am I going to do, carry it around everywhere with me? No, 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 no. Come with me. Coming up, a real-life Mario Kart on suitcases. And if you don't want to stick around for that, then why are you even on this planet? We've seen a smart way to dress sharp and a tumble dryer hack that left us in a bit of a spin. Still to come, top tips for lost keys. And a cooking masterclass in a humble hotel room hack. If you like winding down with a wine, you may be caught off guard with every travelling worker's nightmare. The wine stain that cannot be removed. This hack is your salvation. This is a classic. This is a real classic. I like this one because it works. Normally a good sign in a hack. To be honest, I think putting white wine on a red wine stain is just a big waste of wine. A business person with two bottles of wine open at the same time? Bet they don't get much done. The reason this hack supposedly works is because of the alcohol content. Now, alcohol is actually quite good at dissolving stains, but you need a lot of it to work properly. This hack works even better if you can use stronger alcohol. So something like gin or vodka would be even better at getting that red wine stain out. But just make sure you're using a clear coloured alcohol, otherwise you're just going to make the stain even worse. And remember, if you're raiding the minibar for this, check the prices before you open anything. So the stronger the alcohol, the better it is at stain removal. But how does alcohol remove the stain? Alcohol molecules have two distinct parts, a non-polar group and a polar end made up of oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen atom is slightly negative and the hydrogen is slightly positive. This is because the oxygen nucleus attracts the electrons far more than hydrogen. And when there are lots of polar molecules together, the slight positive and negative charges are attracted, creating weak interactions. There's a saying that like dissolves like, and lucky for us, lots of stains have polar molecules too. This is how they're dissolved by alcohol. This hack works, but having to open increasingly stronger booze in order to get rid of a stain is a recipe for disaster on a business trip, a muddled miss. If you're a sensible business traveller, you'll have a padlock on your suitcase. If you're very sensible, you'll use it. And if you're not sensible, you'll lose the key. This hack is for people in that last category, and me. People can do that. I, I didn't know you could do that. 
That's insane. I, God, so many people have asked me if they could borrow a pen, and I've said yes. I think this is amazing. How could you not think this was amazing? I'm the type of person who loses my keys to locks if I lock stuff. Uh, this is brilliant. This is ingenious. I would absolutely use this. Only use this on your own suitcase because, well, because you shouldn't steal. You shouldn't need me to tell you this, really, should you? Zips work with this kind of series of interlocking teeth and grooves. So if you can jam a pen into the middle and open up one of those, those grooves and zips where they've locked into each other, then you can get in. I'm actually going to use this, you know, because often I do forget keys. So the pen is not only mightier than the sword, but it gives padlocks a good beating as well. A case hijacking hack hit. If your boss has put you in a hotel where the breakfast buffet looks like a prison canteen, this next hack will help fill you up. An iron, ridiculously, can be used instead of a hot plate or a toaster, and a kettle is a great replacement for a pan. The water reaches the exact temperatures needed to scramble your eggs. Just maybe give it a couple of rinses before you start. This is a fantastic hack, but this guy's definitely going to lose his room deposit. First of all, looking at this, what a brilliant idea. And what a, a brilliantly executed hack. Is George looking at the right video? If you want to get nice brown crispy bacon and that nice brown bread as well, you need to get over 140 degrees Celsius. You get something called the Maillard reactions, which is where the proteins and the sugars in your food start to react together to give these delicious smells, and that's what you need from an iron. The flavour of mushrooms, when they've been cooked on an iron, the, the steam holes of which are, are, are rich with, with streaky bacon fat, is just absolutely delicious. And the faint hint of linens is just, is just you, can't, you can't get that in a normal conventional pan. We all need something to get us going in the morning, and some studies have shown that having a good breakfast can help your levels of concentration and help your short-term memory. But you've got to be careful not to have too much, because, well, unsurprisingly, too much food just makes you sluggish. This hack is absolutely insane. Making eggs in a hotel room kettle and steaming mushrooms on an iron is ridiculous, unsanitary and inefficient. So yeah, it's a definite hit. If you're the type of business tripper who always worries about hotel security, look no further than the contents of your nearest minibar to put those concerns on ice. In theory, I really like this. I think this is excellent. I like to hide money all around my house, and that looks like a good... But in practice, it feels like she just spent about 10 minutes hiding a really small amount of money. Every little helps, though, Andrea. I tend to keep my money in uh, the till of the nearest bar. OMG, me too! Cola has an ingredient called phosphoric acid. Mmm, lovely. Um, and whilst that won't necessarily ruin your money, if you drop coins in there, it would do a really good job of uh, shining them up. So maybe it's a good thing after all. This hack is good if you want very small amounts of money very shiny. No? Oh, OK, then. It's a hack. Miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong, and no bridge we won't cross. Mike, with his trusty guinea pig Stephen, will put any hack to the ultimate test. Debunk, demystify, and deconstruct so that you don't have to. Earlier, Mike showed us how to power up the humble suitcase with a speedy airport aid. Now it's time to get serious, kind of, as Mike and Stephen go for the ultimate suitcase slam down in our epic head to head check in chase challenge. Mike, you, you said we were going on a business trip. And this is my airport. I'd love to know which airport this is based on. It's your farm. <laughs> the only thing in the air here is horse fart. What, what are we going to be doing? Right, we're going to have a race. And we're going to start now, so pack your bag. Oh, what? That seemed like a very fair start, Mike. Come on, Teddy. Don't get hurt. For Mike's airport race, the lads must pack and rush through an obstacle course as quickly as possible. So just like going on holiday, then. <laughs> Don't forget your Teddy, Stephen. Come on, Teddy. Sorry about this. He brought that in from home.
Mike's petrol engine means he's off to a turbo-boosted start. Time to grab a quick coffee en route. Make it an espresso. Um, wrong way. Mike's two wheels versus Stephen's four gives him the edge on corners, as well as literally everything else. The tiny electric motor is no match for petrol in speed either. What is this hack proving again? That a motorbike is faster than a suitcase? Did anyone not know that? Buy coffee. This one is in the bag, or should I say, hand luggage. Right, yeah, I'm still with a shout. <laughs> 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 Hang on. Teddy's got you, mate. Maybe I spoke too soon. Teddy's got you, mate. <laughs> Hello, Winner! Well, that was a complete fix. Who's that? Oh, Mike, I forgot about you. I got through the winner line. What's that, Teddy? Oh, yes, Mike's the loser. What a nightmare. Bye-bye. Teddy says bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Multiplicity Suitcase wins today. Oh, oh. Who said winner? I said winner. Who's the winner? Let's just say you're as much of a winner as anyone who talks to a Teddy on telly can ever be. So, business hacks then, Motability Suitcases, how good are these? I think you've absolutely nailed it. Brilliant. The only problem is, I don't think we're going to get through airport security, do you? No, but when they chuck you out, you'll be able to leave in record time. He can put a spin on anything. This is true. We've come to the end of our hack-filled work trip and it's safe to say I think we've taken care of business. See you next time.